Hey friends, how's it going? In today's video, we're gonna discuss five things we learned about bus life while living on the road. Are you ready for it? Number one, we learn it the hard way. The hardest way possible. Do not go to an eye or land spot at night. Just oh. don't do it. Or a place that you don't know how it looks at night. Yeah, anything unfamiliar or anything that you've heard word of mouth uh, with your vehicle, any size vehicle, just try and accommodate some time during the day. If you aren't gonna be able to make it to the destination before sunset, I would advise to, to just park in a place where it will be easier for you to go. For example, Walmart. Yep, a rest area, travel center. Yeah, call to different places and make sure that you are able to park overnight so that way you don't have to move again. Save yourself the headache. It was a $300 lesson for us. So we're not stopping here. This is in the middle of nowhere. Which is fine usually, but. Yeah, but we have a Jeep in the back. There's like mud everywhere and we're stuck. The second lesson that we've learned from bus life while living on the road is that the size of your bus matters in every way possible. Um, to explain, a large bus matters if you want more space, but there's a trade-off. More space equals a much more difficult time finding places to park. So choosing the size of your vehicle or your bus, it depends on what you're looking for. If you're gonna be in a place parked for a long time, and for example, you decide to leave in your hometown and you know where you're gonna be able to park, cool, I will go with a big bus. But if your plan is to travel the coasts or larger cities, places that don't have forest land, national federal land, Bureau of Land Management land, then you really should consider a smaller vehicle. Also, if you're planning on traveling around national parks, some of them have restriction of size, so, with that being said, we come with number three. Towing a vehicle has changed the bus life game for us. It's, it's a no-brainer. With a vehicle this large, we already experienced traveling 3,300 miles in 17 states without it, and we only really got to see... Um, a little part of the place yep. where we could fit the bus, where we could like drive around the, with the bus. So having the Jeep has been a blessing. Yeah, that's something you, that you really need to consider if you're looking to go with a larger vehicle. A 40-foot bus has changed the way that we travel. Our friends in smaller rigs, they move every few days. Where for us, we tend to plan our feet for two to four weeks, sometimes longer, and we disconnect the Jeep, and that gives us the flexibility to see the areas that we're in. So, that's a question that you should ask yourself. Are you willing to tow a vehicle in your, with your bus? And we specifically looked for a vehicle that we could flat tow to avoid having to have any extra length from a trailer. Also, the type of vehicle that you decide to tow is very important. I wanted to bring my Honda Civic at the time. To me, it seems like a great idea. Chasing the steel, getting a Jeep, and bringing the Jeep along, which now I appreciate. Having the Jeep has opened the road to a bunch of exploration possibilities that we would have never been able to visit. Yeah, explore with the Honda or the bus. Number four, getting water on the road can be very, very tough. Larger cities has been a kind of difficult area for us to get water. Also the desert. So when we're traveling, we always try and keep in mind places that we can fill our water tank. We have a large one, 100 gallons, but that brings us into a lot of additional water conservancy. We do take fewer showers. But we look for places where we can get public showers. Yeah, so access to things like a gym membership or travel center uh, showers is huge when you're in an area that you don't have a water fill station, you don't have potable water anywhere nearby, but you still need to get clean. So that's something to heavily consider. And that goes a long way with the size of your rig as well. So if our bus were shorter and we were traveling to areas that had like gym memberships and things like that, then we could fit a bunch of different places to fill up our water. That brings us along to also the size of your water tank. 
you have to think of the necessities for your bus or your life or your family. We have a hundred gallon fresh water tank and it lasts us about... We can stretch yeah. it to about two weeks if we really yeah. wanted to. Yeah. So, for instance, when we were in Ehrenberg, Arizona, we had $2 water fill up and it was less than a mile from where we were staying. It was super easy to get in, super easy to get out, so we didn't have to stretch our water as far as possible. We were able to take longer showers more frequently yeah. in the bus as well, and that was very, very nice. But where we're at right now... It's a little harder to get water, so we prefer to go to national parks where we can find some showers. Or even in San Diego, we found this amazing place where you can pay, pay $2 and an amazing place for a shower in Coronado Island. And number five, people are going to be very curious about your bus. Everywhere you go, people are going to be extremely excited to see your bus. Um, they're going to ask you to tour it. For a lot of people, it's a really big disconnect that this is your home. And for some of you guys with buses or considering buses, it's not gonna be your full-time home. But for those of you who are considering going full-time with it, just understand that there is going to be that, that separation in people's thoughts where they're just gonna see this as a, a fun project for you or a motorhome. Yep. Sometimes in places that you are parking, there's gonna be people around there there for just like the weekend or having fun when you're just trying to actually have a night of sleep or relax. So, you got to take that into consideration when you're considering this lifestyle. Yes. So, with all that being said, those are just five things that we've learned so far while being on the road uh, full time in bus life. I know quite a few of these also translate over into van life um, because you know, a lot of the issues that we're experiencing, some of the larger vans are also experiencing um, places to park and people being curious about your uh, your rig or um, water. Not, yeah, your water or not being able to park somewhere. So we hope this was a little bit informational. And if you have any questions about bus life or living on the road or your home on wheels, whatever you want to call it, comment down below and we'll make sure to make another video. So if this is your first time stopping by, thanks. We hope you come back even more. <laughs>